The problem with the Borg, and indeed the Borg Queen herself, is that we are never able to see the full picture. Do the fundamental changes observed represent evolutionary moves in the Borg that show the flaw of the Borg's logic? Or is it just bad writing? Yes. Even after seeing the Borg in one movie and three different series, an understanding of how the Collective operates and indeed their overall goal is still somewhat a mystery. We do know that originally the Borg were non-cybernetic beings that continued to augment themselves until they became the Borg Collective. While we don't know when these lifeforms officially became cybernetic zombies of doom, it is clear that the Borg were a regional power in the Delta Quadrant during the 15th and 16th centuries as they have assimilated only a few systems. They continued to expand and in the 22nd century became a dominant presence in the Delta Quadrant. There isn't a lot of information on the Borg in the 23rd century either, unfortunately, except they either destroyed or assimilated, or both, the Elorians. Elorian survivors would spread across the galaxy, ultimately making it to the Alpha Quadrant and Starfleet, who would then officially become aware of the presence of the Borg. Interestingly, what was considered new and frightening in the Alpha Quadrant was commonplace in the Delta Quadrant by the 24th century. The Borg would have become the central power of the Quadrant itself. It would be at this time that we know the Collective began to take an interest in the Alpha Quadrant, utilizing their transwarp technology to investigate at least the United Federation of Planets, Romulan Star Empire, and Klingon Empire. Though it's likely they spread further than just these three. During the events of the TNG episode Q Who, we're not really sure how the Collective deals with other species. There is evidence that suggests the Borg initially only care about technology. They would capture entire colonies and ships with little regard to the organics. However, it's possible that this perception could be due to the limited knowledge at the time of Starfleet. Assimilation might have been common practice at the time, and we really wouldn't know. It just depends on which series you want to believe. Regardless, all this leads to the primer of the Borg Queen. While the Queen herself has many theories on who she is and what she stands for, it's very hard to definitively say which is accurate in canon. Her dialogue in First Contact is annoyingly vague, and she doesn't do much better in Voyager until she becomes the ultimate Bond villain. What we can say, without delving into theory, is that the Queen has been a representative of the Borg and included as early as the Battle of Sector 001, though she would claim that she's existed for far longer. She has been, at the very least, a mouthpiece for the Borg and would appear to work as some form of processor in one way or the other for the Collective. She also appears to work both as the Collective and an individual on behalf of the Collective, depending on the interaction needed with other specific species. And that's about it. So with all that out of the way, let's get into some of the theories that could make sense but aren't exactly canon after this. Hey, if you watch the channel, then you know that recently I've been sponsored by Light Chords. And a part of that reason is because they gave me money. But a larger part, and something that not many people know, is that I generally try to do quite a bit of research on those that want me to sponsor them. I take it very seriously who I put on my videos. That's one of the reasons I don't mind telling you about LightCords.com. They have a great selection of light-up smartphone accessories available in multiple styles, colors, and phone models. Moving lights, blinking lights, and sound-sensitive lights to name a few. And maybe, best of all, they have a 90-day product guarantee on everything they sell. That's better than Amazon or eBay. Additionally, every order is shipped within one business day. Head on over and be sure to use the checkout code LORE, L-O-R-E, to get a 20% discount on your first purchase. With that out of the way, let's just get back into it. Before I go too far into this, it's very important to remember that some of these theories assume that the Queen was lying and somehow manipulated both the Borg and Picard. Which honestly isn't out of the realm of possibility. We know that Picard can still be influenced by the Borg, so with that in mind, let's take a look. The first theory to discuss is that Hugh's independence spurred the creation of the Borg Queen. Again, this would require deception on the Queen's part, but it's not insane. 
We know that when Hugh was returned to the Borg that there was mass chaos. I stated in a previous video that it really could be linked to just the Borg cube, but we know that every cube has a central plexus that is connected to all of the collective. Now, it is possible that this nexus is somewhat shielded, but we don't really have enough evidence one way or the other. So if it did spread past the cube, and you had the Borg near annihilation, the creation of the Borg Queen to bring order back to chaos makes sense. We could even have the collective lying to itself, saying that it's still one entity when it is clearly not. This would explain the extreme differences that we see in TNG all the way to Voyager. Another theory is that this was some form of resistance from a specific race. We know that the Queen apparently has either a preference or requirement to be a specific species. This can be garnered by just looking at the Queen models, noticing that they all have similar characteristics. It's possible that the assimilation of a certain race of females overwhelmed the Borg and they were unable to cope, causing the Borg to be circumvented by the aliens and ultimately taken over. Whether this was the plan all along of the species or a plan to stop the Borg that backfired remains to be seen. Another theory comes from the licensed, but not canon, game called Star Trek Legacy. The idea is that the Borg was created by V'ger. The impression given is that this is V'ger from the Star Trek movies, the one that was lost, repaired by sentient machines, and ultimately would consider all organic life to be an infestation. Though, this is somewhat confusing as the Borg do not consider data to be worth anything, but let's ignore that for a second. It would seem to be the most popular idea as it ties in with continuity and explains whatever happened to V'ger after the movie itself. This could also tie into the Queen where they needed a singular voice. They found this in a species of females that could sift through thousands of thoughts at once, bringing an order to chaos as I've stated. The last piece has already been discussed, but it's still technically a theory that she is, as she said, always been a part of the Collective. Perhaps she was the Queen or some hierarch when right before the Organics lost all of their individuality. While not the most sexy, this is likely the best explanation at this point. But if we're being honest, right now we simply don't have enough information to know who the Borg Queen is, or what she is, or how she came about. In these cases, I generally just fall back on what's implied and the dialogue given, that she's always existed. However, this creates massive inconsistencies and it doesn't make a lot of sense. We are getting towards the end of the Alpha Canon for the Borg. Only one or two more videos left. So I'll see you on the next video where I had a chance to talk to a writer for Voyager.